Good morning. The scripture reading for this morning from the second chapter of Matthew, verses 1 through 12, uh, the scripture for our Epiphany Sunday. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means at least among the rulers of Judah. For, you shall come, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child Mary with his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been mourned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. So it's finally here. That is next year, 2021. I know you've heard like I've heard over the years, the expression, wait until next year. Uh, sometimes expressed by certain sports teams that might be having a bad season. Uh, they might say, or their fans might say, well, just wait till next year. And next year comes, and sometimes it's better, sometimes it's not. If it is better, people say, next year is here. But anyway, next year is here. It's 2021. And we've been saying for, I guess, a number of weeks and months now as we've gone through the pandemic that we believe that in 2021 better times are ahead. I still believe that and I'm glad next year is here. Brian Doyle, the writer, uh, wrote an essay about our desire to win, our desire to achieve victory in tough times. And he talked about this idea of winning when we're facing adversity or, or tough times. And he said, he said, maybe if we celebrate grace under duress rather than the illusion of total victory, we will be less surprised and more prepared when illness and evil lurch into our lives as they always will. Grace under duress. I like that term, grace under duress. I think that's what we demonstrated in 2020, and I hope we can continue to demonstrate grace under duress. Now in 2020, we went places that we did not expect to go. We took some trips in 2020 to places that we had not expected where we would go. 2020 could be described as, in one sense, the year that the Methodist left the building. We left our building in 2020. We went to new places. We left our building for worship. Uh, we worship by video. We meet by Zoom. Green Street has also left their building in a new way. Uh, they've given it over to uh, different persons to now manage and own that building, and they are now free to use it or to go somewhere else. We are free to use it or go somewhere else as we choose. We all took some journeys in 2020. We can all take a journey going forward. One journey I know that I want to take is to leave 2020 behind and to move on. Now we always read about the Magi 
this time of year, on or around the first Sunday of the new year. It is fitting uh, as a way to begin a new year to read about these three magi, these three searchers, uh, who took a little road trip uh, of their own. They took a little road trip to find God, following a supernatural event, a star, and creating fear and alarm uh, within the power structure as they went searching for this newborn Messiah and navigating through the attempt by Herod to involve them in his plan to, to kill this child. These three searchers went on a trip to find God. They started out without knowing for sure where they would wind up. They didn't know what the final destination would be. Neither did they know exactly who this child was, who his parents were, and where exactly they would find him. But they headed out believing that if they kept following the star, they would find the Messiah, the Christ child. And as Matthew tells us, they did find him. And when they found him, they were overwhelmed with joy. Now we remember these magi on what we call today Epiphany Sunday. Epiphany, uh, and I looked it up, is defined as the manifestation of divine or supernatural being. That's definition one. So the manifestation of divine or supernatural being, that is God. And the second definition of Epiphany uh, was listed as a moment of sudden revelation or insight. That's the term that we use often to refer to having a, a sudden moment, having an epiphany, understanding something we didn't understand before. That's what we use and call the word epiphany. So as we think about the Magi on this Epiphany Sunday, it seems like a good time to look at the year ahead. And here's what I want to do. And here's what I want to challenge us in uh, Green Street and Main Street United Methodist Church. I want to challenge us to go searching this year. Let's commit to going to new places, just like we did last year. But let's commit to going to new places different from last year. I want us to start asking the question again that we ask in Forward Focus. And that question is, who is our neighbor? And over the next few weeks, I will be asking that question for us, who is our neighbor? And inviting us all to think again about the question that Jesus asked. You recall that Luke tells us about a time when Jesus was teaching and he mentioned to this group that he was teaching that the commandments were to love God with all that you have, all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And as Luke tells us, there's a lawyer in the crowd, and the lawyer tries to press him on that definition of neighbor, saying, who is my neighbor? In other words, who exactly are you talking about that I need to, to be responsible for loving as I love myself? And Jesus answers, of course, with the famous parable of the Good Samaritan. We all know that parable of the Good Samaritan. We don't all always know, however, the context or the background of that parable. That is the question of, who is my neighbor? The point of the Good Samaritan being, of course, that your, your neighbor might be someone that you don't expect to be called to love. Your neighbor might be someone outside of your normal association of people. Your neighbor might be someone that you don't even particularly like. Who is our neighbor? So here's the question and here's the challenge. And that is that in 2021, if we're going to find God this year, and we're going to find the mission of our church, then we might have to go to new places. We might have to continue to leave where we were and go on a journey to a new and unfamiliar location. So I'm gonna be asking the question, or hoping that we ask the question together in 2021.
Who is our neighbor? And I want us to ask it with a little bit of a wrinkle. That is, who is our neighbor that we might not have seen before or might not have considered as our neighbor before, even though they were right beside us all along? Who are the new neighbors that we haven't met? Who are the neighbors that maybe we have met, but if we were pressed, we might admit that we really haven't loved or even cared about those folks? Who are our neighbors in 2021? Who will they be in the year after everything changed and in the year after everything has been disrupted by COVID? Who will our neighbors be? So where will we go in 2021? Like the Magi, the question is, will we become those who have the desire to find God? Will we become searchers? Will we have the desire to go where God leads us? Because I think for Main Street, this will be a pivotal year. Just like last year was a pivotal year for Green Street. And this year in 2021 in the downtown area of Columbia, everything has changed over last year. Businesses have left, new businesses have come in, people have left, new people have come in. The question is, will we find our neighbors? And the even bigger question and the bigger challenge and hope, I think, is that if we accept that our neighbors are in downtown Columbia, then ultimately we are challenged to ask ourselves, how will we find God in downtown Columbia? And how and where and with who are we going to find God? And perhaps even more important, how are we going to help our neighbors in downtown Columbia find God? How will we help them to see God in us in 2021? So let's get ready. Our journey awaits. Let us pray. Lord, help us to be reminded that faith is a verb, not a state of being that is static and comfortable. We hear again that the star that led the Magi to the stable announced to the world that the world's Savior was born. Today we live in a world that is still covered in many ways by darkness and still needing to make that journey to the stable door. And so in 2021, may our lives reflect your light day by day as we seek to serve where you have placed us and as we seek to journey into new places and new ways of serving. This we pray through Jesus our Lord. Amen.